Hey, Fourth Dimension viewers, thanks for checking in again. I'm just back from New York. And as you know, the new cameras announced the Fujifilm X-H2 with the brand new 40 megapixel APS-C sensor. I didn't get to bring back the X-H2, but I'm gonna get hands-on very soon again. I got to go on a walk at X-Summit with a bunch of other photographers and YouTubers. Got to really test out the new 56 f1.2 as well. I was really curious how the new sensor would hold up, um, especially low light, especially with videography. I'm a hybrid shooter, so I do need a camera that does both really well. That's one of the big reasons why I went with Fujifilm to begin with. I do have a lot of investment in lenses, so I was really curious if I would be going towards the X-H2S or the X-H2. It was tough. I, uh, you know, went back and forth. The 40 megapixels looks amazing. But how was the sensor? How did it perform? We, we took it out late night. I did a lot of videography with it as well. Wanted to test out the 8K. Wanted to test out the rolling shutter. Obviously, I would have liked to have more time with it, but just here are some shots that I got. I think if you're mostly a photographer, you'll probably lean towards the X-H2. If you're a hybrid shooter, it's going to be really difficult. If you're more of a video shooter, I think it's easy. The X-H2S, the faster readout, the rolling shutter is a lot better. The open gate 6.2K is amazing. And still, it was really hard for me to decide. I, I'm shooting right now on the uh, X-T4, which when I was in New York, I was like, I'm gonna have to come home and sell this thing as much as I love it. And I was like, okay, am I gonna get the X-H2S for what I do? I'm still keeping my X-Pro3s, so you know, with photography, I'm, I'm covered there, but man, it was tough. So I got to actually uh, speak with some people at Fujikina as well. Uh, this was a free event hosted by Fujifilm. This was the first time Fujikina has been outside of Japan. It was in New York City, which was great. And wow, what a turnout. I got to meet some amazing speakers. I got to meet some of the people that I've been following along and have taught me so much through their own sharing on YouTube and whatnot. And um, you know, I got a chance to speak with Philip Bloom. I was really nervous, but I was like, hey, like, could I show you a photo of my cat? That was kind of my, my icebreaker. And, you know, then I had a few minutes with him just to pick his brain and I asked him which which should I get for what I do I explained to him kind of what I'm after and between the X-H2S and the X-H2 he said X-H2S uh, For the reasons that I mentioned he did one of the talks for the event and He really showed off, you know, the changing of the aspect ratio. It's kind of like Wes Anderson You know you look at the films that he does and he'll you know shoot 16 by 9 or 23 5 by 1 and then go to like a 4 by 3 and it works right? another major feature of shooting in that 6.2 K is you can crop vertical. And it'd be really cool if we could get these vertical 16 by nine frame lines, as well as the horizontal, right? And then we could really frame as we want and be able to crop and post for vertical because, you know, it's a necessary evil for a lot of what we do. You know, a lot of clients are asking for Instagram uh, stories, reels, and TikTok, of course. So, hey, that's the way it goes. And you know, the 6.2K actually really, really helps there. You get so much more headroom to crop and, you know, it's, the image is just, I love it. The, the new F-Log2 basically shot the entire time in F-Log2 on the X-H2S and on the 18-120. to And I've got to say, I love this combination. Um, I'm going to be picking up this lens. I'm curious to hear what you guys think, you know, like if you guys are X-T3, X-T4 shooters, what does this sensor mean to you? Do you care about the megapixels? Some of the images that were blown up from the uh, X-H2 were at the event, and holy smokes, like, amazing resolution. It's, it's comparable to the uh, GFX 50R. I mean, you know, compared to a GFX 100S, there's gonna be a bigger jump there. But um, honestly, how many of us are really blowing up that big anyways? It's great to have, you know, the megapixels for down the road, but, you know, it's, it's also gonna slow down your workflow, you know? You're gonna have to have more hard drives, a faster computer, Bigger cards, like the uh, the CF Express cards aren't cheap. I'm, I'm using a one terabyte card in this thing. And it's a great card, but holy smokes. It's like, I can't remember how much it is. It's a few hundred bucks, so. Definitely consider the whole thing. Like, you know, if you're already in the Fujifilm ecosystem, these are amazing cameras. Would I recommend switching if you're a Sony or Canon or Nikon shooter? Probably not. These aren't groundbreaking cameras. Every system's got great cameras at this point. But for a Fujifilm lover and Fujifilm shooter, like, this is a great time, right? Like these, these are some great tools that, you know, I've left Nikon for, you know, I was, I was lusting after the Z9 actually when I made the switch. And this camera kind of makes me happy that I made the choice when I did. 
it's a stack sensor in a Fujifilm body that gives me the, the autofocus that we've been wanting from the X-T4. Speaking on that, the autofocus is better. I noticed it between the X-T4 and the X-H2S. The EVF is a huge improvement as well. You're dealing with 5.76 million dots, which is like, you know, I was playing with the SL2S recently, um, and this feels like a Fujifilm SL2S. You know, you've got a full-size HDMI in this thing. Like, this is a proper video camera. Nothing against the X-T4, but it's still got that micro uh, HDMI and, you know, I got to meet Palta Tech recently uh, at Fujikina and he was like, you know, he broke his micro HDMI, like it happens. And having a full size HDMI really does help. More cameras should be doing it. Of course, obviously it's got to be bigger to be able to, to house that, but this is a great tool for, for videographers, for photographers and especially hybrid shooters. Do I miss the dials on this thing? I do. But also, it only took me a few days to really get to grips with it. The C1 to C7 dial is really nice. I have it programmed to C1's my stills mode, C2's my uh, 4K 30p, and then I can't remember which one. I think C6 is my um, high-speed recording. C4 is my 6.2K, and just like clicking through and like having the camera dialed into exactly what you want, just on the fly didn't really make me miss the X-T4's um, toggle, which of course, you know, that was a big reason why I bought that camera to begin with was because of how good that seamless transition between photo and video was, but heck, like this camera was really easy to pick up and go and I'm pretty close to selling my X-T4, so if anyone wants to give me a bid, please let me know. Um, but I'm going to be picking up the X-H2S and I'm going to be waiting for the X-T5 and that, that will be my best of both worlds. I'll have my workhorse video hybrid camera and then I'll have my X-T5 which is going to give me that resolution. I don't know if I'm going to sell my GFX at that point. I love that camera too. Um, but that'll give me the best of both worlds. So let me know what you guys think uh, if you're waiting for the X-T5 or if you're just going to jump on that X-H2. Regardless, the sensor is amazing. The low light capabilities of the camera is really good. We're at the point where the myth of high ISO equals more noise is getting busted, like as we know. Or if you have a camera with a lot of megapixels and you really want a clean file, bring a tripod, right? Like that's what it's for. The IBIS is amazing. Uh, I haven't even talked about the IBIS and the X-H2S yet. I think it's better than the X-T4. I did a lot of walking and walking, talking kind of shots. And you know, I've done that a lot with the X-T4 and I, I got a chance to do it with the X-H2S. And with the 18 and 120 with the OIS, it works really well in my opinion. It still doesn't replace a gimbal, but you know, it's in a pinch, it's great. And you know, you're a, mu you're a much smaller pack, you can run and gun, which is awesome, um, which is the way that I like to shoot. So these tools all have limitations. There's no perfect camera. All these cliches are there for a reason. You know, choose the gear that's right for you at the right shoot and just use what you've got, right? Like don't feel like, you have to go out and buy the latest and greatest either. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It'd be awesome if you guys could help me out with this channel. It's brand new to me. I'm brand new to YouTube. I'm actually like a very big introvert. So doing this is actually very vulnerable for me. So, you know, please don't flame me in the comments. But if you do, whatever, I'll, I'll say hi and, and um, you know, and I'll cry a bit, but uh, that's okay too.